Hello, in this video I'm going to be talking about letrozole and its side effects. Before I go on, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're always putting out new content, often in response to questions that we get when you pop a question or comment below. I'd also love to invite you to go to yerba.com to learn more about your specific treatment options. Your yerba report, once you give permission, will access your medical records, cross-reference those records with the latest medical evidence, and give you both a report of what treatments you've had and what you might have yet to come, and your treatment options, including the pros and cons of each. This is not a static one-time report. It's updated every time you get another treatment or another diagnostic test, and it's different from your patient portal. It's sort of a patient portal multiplied by or cubed because the richness of information is so much more. What I'd like to talk about next is the most common side effects from letrozole. And I'm going to start with one that probably many of you have heard about, and that's joint and bone aches and pains. Now, aches and pains might sound mild, but in some people they can be very severe. And it can be in your muscles as well as the joints. So it can feel like you're 100 years old. I've had people tell me it. 40, I feel like I'm 90. And I've had 90-year-olds say, I feel like I'm 90 and I never did before. So it's a generalized achy feeling that's actually most pronounced in the knees and ankles, wrists, and elbows. You can also see it in the shoulders. There's really no part in the body where the joints won't be affected, but it tends to be more like hands and feet and ankles. And they get better throughout the day and they get better with exercise. You know, the medical evidence supports that exercise is really helpful, but so do your comments. Your comments have shown us how important it is to move every day and also to know that this is normal and it will get better throughout the day. Most people tolerate letrozole and can manage these side effects, but if you can't, there's nothing wrong with you. This is the most common symptom and the most common reason that people stop the aromatase inhibitors. We think these symptoms are due to lower levels of estrogen in the body. As you're listening to this, you're probably thinking, oh, what else happens when estrogen goes low? Well, our, the vaginal symptoms and sexual side effects of the aromatase inhibitors are not to be taken lightly. These can be really life affecting and quality of life is really important. Your sexual health and your intimate life are very important, and even if you're not intimate with another person, having vaginal dryness or urinary incontinence because of thinning of the urethral mucosa is really upsetting. This is common enough that it's distressing and we hear about it. Your medical team will not be surprised to hear about any of these side effects. So joint aches and pains and muscle aches and pains are really common. So are sexual side effects as well as vaginal, vulvar, and urogenital side effects like urinary problems with the aromatase inhibitors. Other side effects of letrozole include mood changes. So with an acute lowering of estrogen in your body, many people report depression or anxiety. Now it can be really hard to separate that from the depression and anxiety of a breast cancer diagnosis and being told you're gonna to be on this medication for five to 10 years. It's sort of a daily reminder of all that you have been through and that's very real. In the randomized trials, it does not appear that mood symptoms are more common in people on the aromatase inhibitors than are on a sugar pill. But it's really important to know that clinical trials include people who generally are as fit as a fiddle and they're not experiencing or at risk for depression. Those people with depression or other mood disorders tend not to go on clinical trials as often as people who are neurotypical, no history of anxiety or depression. So this is why there may be a disconnect between what we see on clinical trials and what we see in real life. The other thing is people on clinical trials may not be 100% forthcoming about their symptoms because they don't want to be taken off the trial. This is a phenomenon that's been well documented. So 
clinical trials can differ from your own experience, plus you are your own unique person. And two other common side effects include night sweats or hot flashes. Those are really common as you can imagine because the estrogen in your body is lowered. These tend to be better than on tamoxifen, but it's still a real side effect and it's something to be aware of and that your medical team won't be surprised to hear about. And then the other is fatigue. And it may be that night sweats and what we call vasomotor dysfunction, meaning your blood vessels are not functioning normally, they're dilating and constricting, can disrupt your sleep. So even if you don't wake up with hot flashes or night sweats, your sleep can be disrupted and that can lead to fatigue. But there may also be intrinsic effects of lowering estrogen on your energy levels. So those are the most common side effects that we see. I want to turn now to some equally important but rarer side effects. Just because they're rare doesn't mean that you're not getting them from the medication. You know, one of the comments we see a lot is, this isn't rare, I had it. Rare doesn't mean you're not going to get it. Rare just means it's not something we tell everybody about because sometimes people look glazed. When they hear those more common side effects, they're kind of like, this is too much. And then we give them additional written information or they, we expect the pharmacist to give them more information about less common side effects. So hair thinning is a common one that many of you have written about. Estrogen, as you can imagine, and other hormones are responsible for keeping our hair the way it is. And we can have hair thinning when our estrogen is lowered. So that's important to know that it, and to understand what it entails. It usually affects the front part of the hair, sort of what we think of as a male pattern baldness that we often think about. You can, you can notice it the most when your hair is wet and you're looking up at your hairline. And then as your hair dries or is styled, it might be not as noticeable. It tends not to be the entire head. If it is, you want to get evaluated for other causes, like in particular thyroid dysfunction, because that's actually more commonly going to lead to major problems with your hair that you're going to be acutely aware of because you're on a new medication. So hair thinning is more common, much more common than hair loss, and it's important to rule out other causes. Digestive issues are seen with the aromatase inhibitors. It probably has something to do with the levels of estrogen. You know, our gut is actually has a lot of hormone receptors and changing hormone levels, as well as stress and sleep problems, fatigue, change in activity can affect our GI tract. So people can have diarrhea that they never had before, or they can have constipation, so irregularities and gas. We can see that also in people on the aromatase inhibitors. Again, it's not one of the, you know, we see this in 30% or 20 to 30% of people. It's fewer than 5%, but when it's happening to you, it's 100%. Another thing we can see that's a little different from the muscle aches and pains are muscle cramps. So we see this anytime we give an anti-estrogen, we see it more with tamoxifen where people get leg cramps, especially at bedtime, and muscle cramps can be really upsetting. They can wake you in the middle of the night or keep you from falling asleep. Some gentle stretching or a bath or shower at bedtime can be really helpful, or frankly, anytime throughout the day. Stretching is really useful and developing a stretching habit may be a lifesaver for you in terms of dealing with those muscle, muscle cramps. And the last rare side effect I want to cover today are changes in vision. It's probably the case that over time our vision changes anyway, and we know chemotherapy can affect our vision. And because we're seeing the doctor more often, we may be diagnosed with vision problems more frequently, but vision problems related to the aromatase inhibitors have been documented. Not super common, but something that you may experience. I know I've covered a lot. If you've had another side effect, you're curious, is this related to letrozole? Or if you're on a different aromatase inhibitor and wanna know, could this happen with one of the other two aromatase inhibitors? Drop a comment or a question below. We get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you as always for watching and we'll see you next time.